Hey guys, William Padilla Brown here from Mycosymbiotics, also known as the Mycosymbiote, and we're here in the laboratory in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, and I just wanted to do a little video on our liquid cultures. A lot of people have been starting to order our liquid cultures. You can find us on Etsy by searching Mycosymbiotics, that's M-Y-C-O-S-Y-M-B-I-O-T-I-C-S. And I just wanted to show you guys, we're working with some very clean liquid cultures here, and we're working with young generations of the fungus and healthy, vigorous fruiting cultures. Uh, so every all the work that we do is done in the laboratory uh, in a sterile environment to make sure that you get the best liquid culture possible. And um, yep, we ship anywhere in the United States for three dollars, um, and all of our liquid cultures are ten dollars a pop. So also in this video, I was going to show you guys how you can utilize your liquid culture with or without a flow hood. At Mycosymbiotics Lab, we have a large uh, selection of liquid cultures to choose from. So go check that out on our Etsy page. Also, if you're interested in agar dishes, check out Mycosymbiotics on vesp.co. That's V-E-S-P dot C-O. All right, when you receive our liquid cultures in the mail, this is what it should look like. Um, and sometimes it might you might re uh, receive liquid culture with a mycelium that looks uh, clumped up together like this. That's all right. All you gotta do is just shake it up a bit and it'll redistribute itself. So that's one of the first things that you're gonna to wanna to do uh, whenever you're preparing to inoculate a culture. Uh, just take it and jostle it around a little bit. Uh, kind of like a pencil when you make it do that funny thing like when you used to do at school. Um, but yeah, just shake it around and it'll redistribute itself. Sometimes it'll be a little bit more, uh, some like the turkey tail especially, are a little bit more uh, tenacious than others um, but yeah you'll shake it up and it'll redistribute itself and you'll get a nice even amount of mycelium throughout it and all the mycelium looks a little bit different this is a garicon um, but today uh, I'll be working with some familiar cultures uh, we have the SRA this is the Strafaria rugosa uh, this one is my pinky uh, I, I call that the pinky that's the pink oyster uh, it's one of my best performing pink oysters uh, we have the lion's mane and a brat oyster, so that's uh, the commercial oyster that I work with. And uh, you're usually going to be working with some sterilized uh, cereal grains. I have some videos that show how to prepare that, so I didn't include that in this video, and you can find the links to those videos in the description. Um, and you're just going to want to make sure that it has some sort of port to work with, which you'll see. <coughs> um, so yeah, as I said, they've been sterilized, and now I'll show you how to introduce your culture. All right, so we have the SRA, the King Strafaria, Strafaria rugosa annulata. This is what we're going to be working with first. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is uh, make sure that we sterilize the needle tip. That's the first thing that you're going to want to do. So you can do this with a simple lighter. Uh, you can do this with the alcohol lamp. Um, a lot of people have butane torches or propane torches in their house nowadays, so that's what I use. Um, I'm just going to run this through the flame. You're going to want to make sure it gets red hot. It's been sterile and your jar is sterile. <clears throat> Remove the lid from the jar. Wait a few moments for your needle to cool down or else you will melt your filter or whatever insert that you have. Uh, maybe some have the needle insert. Now that it's cooled down, you're just going to want to insert the needle through. Make sure that it's gone the whole way through so that it's not <clears throat> that it's not in the filter and then just distribute one milliliter per jar and now that one milliliter will turn into one quart jar which can be expanded into 10 sawdust bags so this is how we do our expanding of our cultures Eventually, your cereal grain should get colonized with the mycelium. This is almost fully colonized. And then we have an oyster that is super colonized. And then you can expand it over to your sawdust. So, yeah, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up if it's helped you in any way. Let me know. If you have any questions, drop that down below. Um, other than that, it's been another Mycosymbio video. Uh, I hope that everybody can propagate and myceliate.